Hello, this is Matt from tracyandmatt.co.uk and from unboxings.com and here I am again with the HTC Desire Z. Now we've already got an unboxing video of this handset but we thought uh, we'd actually do a little bit more of a demo. For those of you that haven't seen the unboxing, we'll just have a quick recap of the handset. So we've got 3.7 inch display, 480 by 800 pixels, capacitive touch screen and it is an SLCD or Super LCD display. Touch, buttons underneath, home, menu, back and uh, search and a physical push button underneath that. On the left hand side we have an up and down volume control rocker then there is also the micro USB connector for sync and charge. On the bottom we have a small hole which is the microphone. Right hand side we have a camera button and a button for releasing the back cover which we're going to use in a moment. Power button and a headphone connector. Also on the back we have a camera which is a 5 megapixel autofocus camera with an LED flash and uh, there we have a grill over the loudspeaker. This back cover here is metal and is released by sliding that button there. And that reveals space for our SIM card. It just pops in there. And actually, let's just pop the battery out. Underneath there, we also have the micro um, SDHC memory card socket, which supports uh, up to 32 gig uh, micro SDHC. Underneath the battery, though, which does mean that you have to remove the battery to access it and also um, had to remove the back cover to and the battery to remove the SIM card so uh, just let me power that up because it takes a second or two to turn on on the front we also have the large loudspeaker which is quite cool and then where the device gets its name is that it has this Z mechanism for um, revealing a full quality keyboard so uh, it does actually sit the screen quite flat in comparison to the keypad as you can see there the screen does sit quite flat. The advantage there is that the top row of keys isn't really obs uh, obstructed by um, the bezel or the bit there around the display. So four rows of keys as you can see um, and they're pretty large QWERTY uh, keys for a QWERTY keyboard and they are nice and tactile and have a nice little tick to them as you can probably hear there and that's centralized spacebar which is also good and it's uh, one of the best uh, quality keyboards I've actually uh, had the pleasure to use on a device like this so uh, I'm very impressed with it. Uh, in terms of specification, just a quick rundown, it's quad band for GSM, dual band for HSDPA, 119mm from top to bottom, 60mm wide and just over 14mm thick, weighs 180 grams, which isn't particularly uh, lightweight but uh, when you consider the mechanism and what you're getting inside there, um, I suppose it's not that surprising to uh, to be that weight. One and a half gig of internal ROM and 512 meg of RAM. Obviously, you can supplement that with micro SDHC memory card up to 32 gig. Uh, it's HSDPA and uh, 3G. HSDPA up to 14.4 megabits, which is amazing. Uh, Wi-Fi supporting 802.11b and G network standards, which is uh, again very good. Uh, it has uh, built-in GPS and supports geotagging and face detection, 720p video recording from the camera on the back, um, and uh, running Android Froyo 2.2, so that's pretty impressive. So let's uh, have a quick look at the operating system and what the handset can do. So we slide here to unlock, and then we have the HTC Sense, uh, which is very similar to uh, a number of other HTC devices in terms of its layout. So we have a centralized page with the clock, it will pick up eventually my location, but I am indoors, so GPS uh, may not pick that up initially. And it also might be down to the fact, actually, in here. Let's just check our settings for location. And we'll turn on use GPS satellite, so that will help, obviously. And we'll go back home. There we go. And over a period, over a time, that will probably pick that up there. Um, so, yeah, this is the main page. As you can see, the clock just flipped round. And then either side we have our favourites, this is for like uh, speed dials and that sort of thing and then we have mapping and then we have a blank page and coming back the other way we have the friend stream which is Twitter and Facebook uh, HTC messages, that's a message interface and weather, uh, obviously we can customise these with additional widgets and if we don't want to swipe backwards or forwards we can just, we can just push the home button push the home button again will take us into this uh, leap view which will show all of the uh, running applications or widgets that we have on all of those pages so we don't have to keep scrolling through or if we're not sure which page something is on we can actually see this small view uh, and then switch back if we just push home again it takes us back home 
Uh, but it must mean that you don't have to keep swiping backwards and forwards if you don't want to. Although um, I think a lot of people kind of like doing that. Widget wise, we can add widgets. So we have uh, uh, wallpaper and skins that we can change up here. We can change the scene. And we have various scenes that we can use. And we ha nicely have this preview of the scenes that are available now, which is a fairly new feature, well, it's actually a new feature in um, 2.2 uh, of this version of HTC Sense. So this is the standard theme. Or we can have a social theme, and we can have a work theme, and it's more work centric. And then we have a play theme, and we have a travel theme. Uh, again, these are all customizable. You can add additional themes, you can get more themes. Um, but we can, we will just stick with the standard one for now. And in fact, we we'll just hit back. And we can add additional widgets if we want to. And there's quite a lot of different widgets that are available. So we've got uh, bookmarks, calculators, calendars. Uh, we have Facebook as a theme. We have the FM radio, friend stream, which we already have on there. Google Latitude, locations, music, uh, HTC navigation, photo albums. Um, as you can see, there's quite a few that we can actually add there. Um, we'll look at those or actually when we do our review. So if we go back home, uh, the phone dialer. Let's just bring that up. So it's a fairly standard you know, interface for actually dialing numbers. Nice touch sensitive screen. Obviously being capacitive it's extremely sensitive. Uh, and we can just dial the number there obviously and that picks that up. Um, we can hide the keypad if we want to. And uh, also from here we can look at our phone book or our call history rather. Um, from here we can go into contacts, uh, groups, online directories so it will pick up anything that's coming across from Facebook or any of the others here or our call history so that's a nice little interface but next to the phone is what we can bring up to actually do the personalization uh, which we've already looked at but that's just another way of bringing that up and then the button to the other side brings up our main menu of uh, installed applications and before I go in there let's go back home Go back to the menu and we're going to go into settings and we are going to set up a wireless network. Turn on the Wi Fi and go into Wi Fi settings and let's uh, go ahead and join a wireless network, which hopefully we can. And there we go, we're connected. I use the keyboard, so a little bit easier. And we can come back out here. So that just means that some of the things that we're looking at in the under programs are going to work properly. So we've got quite a few things installed, more than probably, what, two pages worth. So uh, Amazon MP3, we can block callers, uh, desktop calendar, car panel, Facebook, FM radio, there's the HTC hub, uh, latitude and internet, navigation, all quick office, soundhound, we've well, got quite a few things on here. First of all, I want to go and take a look at the internet and check out the web browser. And rather than going to HTC, sorry HTC, we're going to go to There we go, well, let's check that out. progress bars in here to go by, well, it seems to be loading relatively quickly. Obviously we are using Wi-Fi and a broadband connection, but with uh, HSDPA you'd imagine, well it'd probably be quicker than this because uh, my broadband connection isn't the best. There we go, page loading. Yes, and clearly my broadband connection is terrible this morning. But uh, get the idea page looks really good on this display. Uh, the SLCD display I think uh, well really unless you actually had an AMOLED screen next to you or next to this to do a comparison it would be very hard to distinguish the two. Um, it's The colour reproduction is great. Um, the blues and the yellows here look really fantastic and the rest of the page is gradually loading. That's not really um, a problem with the handset. The handset isn't slow. It's just, um, let's say, the broadband connection or internet connection is slow. Uh, we can use two finger zooming, obviously to have a look at stuff that we're zooming in on. And we can scroll back out. 
and then when we double tap on something or when we zoom in we actually get this reflowed version that fits on the page there so that we don't have to scroll backwards and forwards to look at the text we don't have to scroll down which is pretty cool I think that's a really great feature of these uh, HTC handsets, this reflow of text and there we go, so that's the web browser and we come back out and we can take a quick look at Google Maps and I wonder if we actually have got a GPS fix yet Okay, so it tells you at the top there, that little pulsing satellite -y thing, basically that we're looking for GPS signal. If I go into menu, I can go to more. I can go to menu and I can go to search. We can search maps. I'm sure I bother to do right now. Or we can look for additional places or we can tap there and we can wait for like, so it still says it's waiting for location let's say I'm indoors so it's not surprising that we aren't picking up a GPS fix right now I'll just come back out of that for now so we've got HTC News, Android Market I'll pop into Android Market for the sake of actually setting up my account and I'll sign in and signing into my account will allow me to sync it's going to ask me about uh, confirming terms and conditions, which we're going to confirm. And that will load Android Market. Okay, it's taken a few seconds to do. And there we go. So, Android Market looks pretty much the same no matter what handset you use, but for those of you who haven't seen it before, um, it's fairly similar to the App Store. Um, we have games and the games are actually broken into categories or we have down downloads and it will show us anything that needs updating invariably there are things that need to be updated here we go so these are updates that need to be installed I can go ahead and update all but I'll wait to do that later and then under apps you've got applications and categories too so that all works quite well main reason for signing into that go back is that in doing so it will have picked up my there we go, Gmail account and there we go, so my Gmail account there is already synchronized in, in signing into the Android market that uh, actually works there we can take a look at our email and well, that's the email view, that works quite well also you can set up additional email accounts if you want to uh, which is done Yeah. So we can set up a Microsoft Exchange Active Sync connection or others such as Pop3 and IMAP. Going into here, setting up Active Sync is dead straightforward. Um, some servers will pick it up by just the email address and password, or you can go in through and do a manual setup when we set up and move the keyboard down. So you just need the email address and your server address, domain, username, password. Obviously, that all sets up, that will synchronize your calendar. Uh, and all the other stuff as well that's associated with your exchange account, so that's good. Uh, navigation, we have a piece of navigation software on here where we can speak destination, type destination, and we can get to contacts again. It's looking for a GPS connection, so we'll look at that a bit later on. Locations uh, also is going to require GPS connection. Uh, we can get to settings through here, we've got Google Talk and Stocks. Uh, we've got videos, and that's really is to do with anything that's actually on the handset. You've got your weather as an application. Uh, I think most people are familiar with this sort of uh, view that on many of the HTC handsets, this, there we go, lovely raindrops on the screen and the windscreen wiper. I think uh, HTC have become very well known for their weather application. Uh, also got YouTube and you can search for something on YouTube which we will give it a quick go but I suspect it won't be fantastic with the connection speed we have 
There we go, Leo D. It's Leo D, my our channel name. There we go. Uh, and so this list actually it seems a little bit faster there. This some of our videos, and we could go and take a look at uh, one of the videos here, just uh, for the hell of it. I think we'll give up on that for now anyway, so it's obviously not loading. Uh, but I'm sure you get the idea. I'm sure most of you have seen this before. Um, obviously, when we rotate the handset, the screen rotates accordingly. And if we do do, do, do a search, obviously we can have the on-screen QWERTY keyboard, which works in both landscape and portrait. Or we can open up the hardware keyboard and in doing so it actually does turn off the on-screen keyboard which is pretty intelligent um, but it doesn't turn back on when you close uh, and also we can do voice search if we want to on many of these things so we can go back out of here we go back home and finally let's just take a quick look at the camera let's take uh, see how it performs in taking a photograph of that just camera button there we go uh, it's not the most interesting thing to take a picture of, but it's got some colour. And actually it does show how well the SLCD screen does handle those colours. Uh, there we go. I'll take a quick snap there. With Android we can't take photos if there is no memory card, of course, but uh, we'll take a look at those when we come to our full review. That's kind of annoying. So uh, memory card not being included. Um, it's kind of irritating as well. One cool thing about the camera application though, and it's a simple thing, but the icons also rotate when you rotate the device. It's a simple thing, but it's pretty it's pretty cool and it's a, it's a good thing that they've done that. Um, I think that's really all that we've got to look at for now. Obviously there are loads and loads of other things installed. Uh, optical trackpad at the bottom as you can see allows us to move th through look at things but uh, I think uh, many of you will have seen most of these features on other handsets before and that's just a quick sample really to whet your appetite we'll have a full review for you on tracyandmat.co.uk over the next couple of weeks in the meantime if you want to follow us on twitter it's twitter.com slash tracyandmat or on facebook.com slash tracyandmat.co.uk uh, I'll be back soon with some more videos and reviews and as I say this review will be online uh, within the next week or so. Apart for now, thanks for watching. Bitdefender is dedicated to protecting people's digital lives, so working with unboxings.com to help preview and review the latest technology is a perfect fit.